right, so, you know, Sundays are basically consciousness teachings, you know, the higher levels, higher planes of teaching, awareness and things like that. And, you know, sometimes because we all live in our own reality and we know what we know, we don't always realize that maybe others don't live there. <laughs> and... <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> they do too. <laughs> so, what I, what sometimes like good friends that know me for a long time remind me that people don't always realize or know what it is I'm really talking about or, you know, the higher levels of awareness and, you know, for example, what are we really doing here? Who are we? Like if I asked you, you know, do you feel like you've come here? Do you have a purpose here? And what is your purpose? You know, and people say, well, I don't know what my purpose is, but they're looking for a purpose, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So if you were looking for a purpose, what kind of thoughts are you having? Like what kind of purpose are you thinking? You know what I mean? Like, for some people, they think they've come here to do something really big, do a big mission, help humanity, things of that nature. And, um, and then sometimes people just feel inside that there's a purpose, you know, there's a purpose why I'm here, what I'm called to do. And, and, you know, so it gets a little confusing for people. You know what I mean? It's like they're looking for an answer. They're looking for something that they're meant to be doing, mm -hmm. right? Okay, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna ask the question. Is that what you guys are doing? I'm just curious. I just want to. I need to know where you live in awareness. That's why I'm asking this. Well, my, under, what's the, my understanding is really just how to live in alignment with your essence. Mm -hmm. That's what? that's, that's mm -hmm. sole purpose. Right? Sole purpose. Yeah. yeah. Like how do you live in alignment with your essence? Yeah. I mean, some I like seriously, some it. people really. Well, I think most of humanity is thinking that they're here. For and they have a purpose. Oh, I'm sure they do. Yeah, they do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I think mine. I don't think you think about it enough. No, yeah, <laughs> and in the beginning, I don't think I thought about it at all. Like, I just never really, like, purpose never really come into my vocabulary thoughts. And then it, when it did, it was more like, yeah, what am I supposed to be doing? Or who am I supposed to be helping? And then later it came into, oh, I'm here to clear mine <laughs> and do my thing here um, mm -hmm. this lifetime now. Mm -hmm. So it's changed over the course of the years. Sometimes. Right. So aware, as you become more aware, yeah. Yeah. You, become to, you come to know it's less in the, yeah. that it's less of a doing thing mm -hmm. and, yeah, mm -hmm. less doing, but more of the authenticity of who you are. Really what you're here for is to shine your light, mm -hmm. to be liberated mm -hmm. from all the wounding, you know, because here's the thing with past life stuff, or any, even if you, it doesn't matter what you believe in, okay? Even if you don't believe in past lives, and you, you still have a sense of, well, things come through your bloodline, they come through your genes. And you, all your life, I'm sure you have been aware of some sort of blockage, inhibition, being held back somewhere where you are not totally free to just be who you are in every moment, okay? So your true purpose is to be liberated from all of that, and in that you will be who you are, and it doesn't really matter what you're doing. If you're a farmer or a rancher or you make shoes or you do clearings and healings or you know, be a waitress or whatever, but you're doing it because it's, speak, it's from coming from within. And there's a joy in it, there's a celebration in life, and you're in a state of oneness, acceptance, and no attachment. So it's really about your own liberation. So you've had many, many lifetimes trying to unravel, but unfortunately every single time, you actually gathered more information. So, you know, you know I mean? more, more trauma, more pain, more blockages, more interferences, and now here you are, it's like, okay, and, and you can feel within your own self your own limitations. And it gets, you know, it gets compounded and we start thinking that we, have, we must have a purpose here. There's a reason we're here, there's a purpose for, for our lives, we're meant to be doing something helpful or to help humanity, all of that. But the truth is, is when you are liberated, there's no attachment. Ha has everybody ever felt that? Knows what that feels like? Mm -hmm. Feeling no attachment at I all? Have. What, to the outcome or attachment? To anything. I have. Anything. anything. No attachment. I have. Even closely. Mm -hmm. It seems like I've had brief moments of it. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit too much. Seconds. <laughs> 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 I know. I mean, like, it's it's a few 
hours of the day or something <laughs> after one of our stuff classes or clearings, and I'm like, wow, I just mm -hmm. feel, mm -hmm. you know, here. And now mm -hmm. I don't feel any any attachments or draws. That, I mean, that could be a glimpse in it, perhaps, but that's the yes. Focus Can, and and was, isn't it? It's like a feeling of isn't it like a peaceful, oh, liberated? Yeah, peaceful. Yeah. In the moment you have, like the moment something happens, yeah, yeah, and there's an agitation in the body as well when you have an attachment. When you want, like if you have children, and you want your children, want something for them, or want, you know, whatever that is, clean that, clean, yeah. even that, okay? Even that. All of those energies, all of those are attachments. All of them. And so the clearer we are, we become liberated from attachments. We really do. I'm, not, I'm telling you, honest to God, for real. Okay? Not only do you get liberated from attachments, you get liberated from outcome. You get liberated from your own will, your own desire. It doesn't mean that you're not going to be functional. It doesn't or mean... Or, yeah, you won't be irresponsible. But what it really means is you'll be living that divine light that you are, creator incarnate. Okay? When, that, when you're that, it's like the world can be in chaos and there's nothing in you that's in chaos. Mm -hmm. And even in the suffering of humanity, even in your own suffering, there's, it, it becomes a non-suffering. Mm -hmm. It just becomes the acceptance of what is and the resistance allows for the body to live in a state of peace, calm. And then you're also more connected to the, tr the higher higher levels, your higher the higher levels of who you are, and at the at the more super conscious level, and then the more guidance happens. Like you, I'm sure you've noticed that sometimes you just get these knowings and you just follow through, and then everything unfolds perfectly, right? That's because you're plugged in to the higher levels, which is what we're really wanting. That's our. It's not even a wanting, but that's what we're working towards by clearing out what's inside, the blockages, the limitations, the traumas, the shocks, all of these things that, that really do create these blocks inside. The thing is, is that we have co-created everything. Okay, now how, I know this is a good one because you, I know you know this, but not everybody knows this. You create your life 100%. Not 50%, not 75, not 90, not 99, not 10, <laughs> not 20, not 5. Darn it. <laughs> Okay, 100%. <laughs> that also means there are no victims. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> yeah. She did that to me. You're the reason I'm in pain. It's your fault. No, not. Okay? So the good news about waking up to all that is you stop pointing the finger, stop making it about somebody else. But what it, that also does is it allows for you to really start unraveling even at deeper levels what's inside, what's in the way, what's the limitations, what are the blockages. And I, I do know how hard it is to come out of these places. I remember, this is like way back, when I had the Renaissance Center teaching consciousness and I'd have a rea something would happen with my brother, you know, and I'd go into a reaction. And I would know as, I would know it. I'm going, okay, I'm reacting. But he did that. I'm reacting. But he I'm reacting. Yeah. You know what I mean? It was like I just wanted to make it about him. And so I think that's partly too the waking up and, and every time you're in a reactive state and you're making your making about somebody else, that that keeps you from unraveling your own stuff. Okay? So our reactions are our doorways in, the reactions to life, the reactions to people, the reactions to situations all tell us and show us our own roadmap into ourselves. If we understand that and we can, when we can stop that, you know, that, that initial thing where we're wanting to blame somebody else, then we can start unraveling at a, at a deeper level. So the feelings that we're looking for are the subconscious feelings. So when you have a reaction and, and you're able to catch that reaction and go, okay, I'm having a reaction. What am I feeling? So just so you know, those initial feelings that you're aware of are the conscious feelings. They're, if you, can, you can go with those, but nothing will change. Okay? 
It's when you sit with that, like for example, if I were to use like with my brother, okay, so I, something happens and I feel a judgment towards him and it makes me feel like angry and even to the point where I actually wanted to hurt him. You know what I mean? I could punch him. So, so to clear that, to unravel that, <laughs> was more like, okay, so you, I'm letting, I would let myself feel the energy, let myself feel the anger, whatever that feeling was, let it be there. It's not about acting out on it, but it's about being with it, okay? Once I'm with it, so that I stay with the anger, okay, yeah, 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 stay with that, stay with that, let it kind of move, move through the body, and then I go, stay under and go underneath that feeling. What's underneath that? And I found feelings like, feeling like impotent, where, um, you know that feeling where you f it's like, um, there's nothing you can do. Oh, I know what it was. You guys, check this out. <laughs> it's that helpless, but you know what? I had memories of being enslaved, okay? When you're enslaved and they got chains on you and you have no rights, they can do anything they want to you and there's nothing you can do and that feeling inside that wants to fight against that or to push that, you know what I mean, and rebel, and all that would do would get more harm done or more, more terror, you know what I mean, more trauma would happen. Mm -hmm. But it was that fight that was kept trying to, trying to change what was really, ha what was the isness. okay? So, so what if for whatever reasons, choosing to be enslaved in that lifetime, knowing myself in that, and then in this lifetime, feeling major rebel, major rebel, major rebel, mm -hmm. okay? So it's the unraveling of what that feels like to be enslaved and to be punished and to be beaten and to be tortured and to have physical pains like rawness on your body from metals, you know what I mean? Like you've seen how that happens. I mean, it's painful. Even the, you know, slaves, that's what happens, you're enslaved. So the unraveling of those kinds of feelings literally softens your, your energy field, softens the body, and allows your body to relax into more acceptance of whatever is. So, you know, even there's be people that are in a state of awareness, wakefulness. There's even books written about them. I mean, being imprisoned, you know what I mean? Like locked up in little cells for 50 years, but they're not in a state of irritation, agitation. They're in a state of peace, oneness, joy. Why is that? Because they're not resisting and fighting against what is. So a lot of our own traumas, like for example, I'll go back to my own remembering of being enslaved. I fought it. Duh. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I didn't want it. I rebelled against it. I felt it was unfair. It wasn't right. It was taking my rights away. And, and so it created a lifetime of torture and pain and suffering, but I didn't let go of it then and car obviously carried it through many lifetimes, even into this lifetime. I can remember being young, having that feeling, don't tell me what to do, don't try to control me, don't try to manipulate me, don't, you know, and I think some of you all have that because I think on some level, most everyone's experienced some kind of enslavement, whether it was things like, um, like right now, if we look at other cultures and their, their, how they treat their women, you know what I'm saying? That's subservient, isn't it? Even in even Mexico, the women are, you know, they're, they're the, the moms, they do the cooking, the da-da-da-da, okay? But there's a quality, a level of being enslaved. Mm -hmm. So the fighting against it, which obviously I did, carried it forth, and what I was just saying is, it like most everyone has some kind of feeling with that in their body. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you might feel it really strong, right, Karen? Oh, yeah. Like, almost like you would fight to the death rather than have something, someone um, overpowering you or enslaving you or taking your rights away. I can see it in your, you know, your whole energy field. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that you got this major rebelling, okay? So just imagine, what if that didn't happen? Just, can you imagine what that would feel like? If, can you imagine what that would feel like? Rebelling? No. I mean, I've, it's been with me for so long. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <Because. laughs> right. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. So the odds are that we're talking way past incarnational experiences. It's usually not just your one-time thing, but it's lifetimes of having that kind of experience, and then 
the fighting against it, the injustices of things, you know, that there's that kind of rebelling against. So if you really get that, who's suffering? Okay, so who's the one in the spin? Who's the one in the agitation? Who's the one feeling like your guts are all jumbled up? Who's in the state of, you know, like lashing out? You look around, nobody else is experiencing it. <laughs> <laughs> And unless they are, but even then you're not, you know, you're not going to know their experience, but it's in you. It's yours. It's your resistance. It's your fighting against. I mean, it's like, it's like, okay, this, we've been having rain and overcast, no sun. I mean, you know, it's pretty, people start getting a little agitated, wanting the sun. That's still a desire, that's still their will, wanting something other than what is creates agitation, mm -hmm. creates a feeling of resistance. Mm -hmm. Where are you feeling it? In your body. Are the birds feeling it? No. <laughs> okay? <laughs> they're, they're, okay? So we are, the, we are the ones who are suffering and we are creating our own suffering by our resistance to the isness that you cannot change. You cannot make that sun go away. You don't have those powers. Let me see, is there hardly anybody on the planet that has those powers that can really truly change the, the weather? So, you know, it's, it's really, since you can't change out there, it's really about, okay, what needs to happen here so that I don't care what's happening, I'm good. I'm in a state of joyfulness, happiness, enjoying whatever it is, no resisting, no fighting against, but in a state of being. It's a state of being. It's a state of consciousness. It's a state of awareness. That, y that, you, that is what you are all, we, are, we all of us are looking towards, working towards. That's why we do what we do. That's why we go to clearings or we go to healings or we see s people and get work done or whatever. We're seeking liberation. Okay? So, you know, you all know all those things too, so the seeking is not like the doing, doing, and yet there's some level where if you, without some kind of seeking, some kind of desire, then no action gets taken. If you just sit there waiting for it all to happen, it's not going to happen. But it is that place where we stop the resisting, and what happens then is in the resist, in the stopping of the resisting, then we are more able to really feel within our own selves what's really going on. What's this churning? What's this agitation? What's this feeling of leaning, you know, like a, you can feel when you have a desire, there's an agitation that literally happens in the, in the heart center. You can feel it. Because you're leaning out, you're wanting something, and you're, you know, it's like wanting it, and, but you're not being able to just feel it within. So, in my experience with humanity, and I worked thousands of people over 30 years, and it's the ability to be with oneself that's really, really difficult. If I said to you, okay, well, you want to go sit in the desert for four years? Maybe see a people occasionally when you go get food? What would that be like? Most people have thought of that as like... Mm -hmm. Oh no, it's not too attractive. <laughs> uh -huh. I used to dream about that when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. like I wish I could just live in the woods by myself and not have anybody ever around. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. sounds good. Is so. <laughs> Till you're in it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's an intense burn. Because there's no, no distractions. I mean, if you do it, like I didn't do TV, I didn't do radio, I wasn't doing major distractions. So it's like being with oneself. Like, the moment you get up to the moment you go to bed, <laughs> nothing else to do but be with this. Okay, alrighty then. So <laughs> it, it creates a lot of fuel you know what I mean? There's a lot, a lot to play with, a lot to start releasing, a lot to face, because we got lifetimes. So, being with oneself is vital. It's key. I mean, I think you all know we're always looking for some kind of distraction. You get it? You got agitation. You got feeling nervous, upset, angry, sad, whatever. Do something to get away from it. So now what I'm saying is, stop doing that. Stop it. Because as long as you're running, running, guess what? This doesn't change. Oh, agitation, run, run, run. Oh, sadness, run, run, run. Oh, you know, frustration, run. Anger, terror, fear, run. Okay, no. 
you have to stay with it, you have to stay, be in the body in order for this energy to shift and move. The good news is, this is the good news, most of the energy is not you. Okay? Okay? So remember, okay, let's just back up. Enslavement, being a slave, okay? That feeling, that desire, that fighting, resisting was the doorway into all kinds of other energies, other entities, other things that are not of that body to come in and also contribute and compound it and make it more and more and more and more and more, and more intense, okay? That's why clearings are really cool because as we take out what is not you, then what is left is yours. And most of the time what is left is easy to pop through. It's easy to get that, that out. And sometimes that means just being with it and feeling, okay, for example, I remember that feeling of being impotent where you, there's nothing you can do. It's like, it's almost like, I remember, okay, if you ever had brothers or even playing or someone would get you on the ground and they'd hold you down, okay, mm -hmm. start to, you know, do spit in your face or something. You know what I mean? Just anything to just kind of like, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> okay? But that feeling, okay. So that feeling of resisting and fighting it, the difference, the, the opposite of that is to soften to it, surrender to it, and let yourself be with what the, how that's making you feel, and to go with the feeling of being impotent, to go with the feeling of being hopeless, helpless, but to go with them so far that your body releases the energy so that it doesn't exist anymore. This is partly what the Renaissance Center was based on, the foundation of the Renaissance was the emotional stuff, which is the, you know, the going into rather than resisting and embracing whatever that was. So if you would just imagine, okay, for example, Trixie, just come here for a second. I just want to show you something. Okay. So if I take Trixie, let's say I'm just going to suffocate her. Okay. So her initial reaction is to fight. But let's just say, <laughs> 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 let's say she gets to that point where she knows she's going to die. For real. Pretend. Okay. So rather than the fighting and the resisting, there becomes that place where she goes into the opening up to knowing what this feels like. Knowing, pretend like I'm her husband, you know, way back. Yeah, okay, yeah. And then I'm enraged, okay, and I'm choking her to death. And she, as she reaches a point, she's seeing her children, and there's, she's fighting, and then pretty soon, but then she wakes up to the realization of awareness, of consciousness, who we really are. Mm -hmm. We are not these bodies, okay? So in that moment, Rather than dying with the trauma and the shock that she's going to carry over, this time she's going to re re surrender into it and be fully present in the body as the body dies. Okay? As she feels and knows the trauma, the horror of, of the children, she sees her children, she'll never see them again. You guys, when you're facing that death moment is... It feels like lifetimes, literally, you have awareness, but it's a matter of just my, minute seconds, okay? But a lot can happen. So as she is feeling that, she knows she's going to die, so she totally surrenders. And then she lets herself feel the trauma. She lets herself feel the sadness, all the emotions that are arising up, even the feeling of being helpless, hopeless. That hopeless feeling, you guys, I'm telling you right now, is intense. To surrender to that is big. That means everything in the body has to s totally soften, surrender, no resistance, no fight, nothing. Mm -hmm. And in that, the energy will leave the body rather than getting stuck, and then you carry it over into your next incarnation. So as she's dying, you know, mm -hmm. that feeling, all those feelings flat, boom, 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 boom. But rather than fighting them, she's totally aware, totally conscious, and she, you know, she surrenders to it. Okay, so in that surrender, the energy leaves, leaves, leaves the body, and then she's, like I said, she is liberated from that. Okay, so it's, it's that place of, like, she could be fighting it, fighting it, fighting it, trying to, you know, but the, you reach that point where you start to go unconscious, and she could die going with that fight, but if she woke up in that moment, then she would not carry it over. The point is, is even in right here, right now, the feelings can get as intense as though you feel like you're dying. Mm -hmm. 
truly. Surrender. I'm telling you, surrender. Let the energy move, but be conscious and present in the body. The moment you leave your body, take your awareness somewhere else, you're, you, know, you stop the process of the unraveling, the unwinding. Yeah, okay, so that's, I think that's happened a lot with whole humanity. They just start to leave the body you rather do, than yeah. experience, I'm sorry, I'm having a flash being beheaded here, like waiting for yes. the turn. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, I was leaving. I exactly, like then you didn't have to be there, you didn't have to remember it, you didn't have to go through so much trauma. I had, a, I had one of my, a friend of mine, this was way back, um, back in early, late 80s. I w it, it shocked her, but she, I was doing some past life stuff with her and she was attacked by like a lion or something and she freaked out, like freaked out. And I just kept her there and got her to, to a point to where she could just call, you know, be with it. Even though it was like terrifying, she stayed with it while this thing ripped her apart and ate her. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But she died. But I'm saying, what my point is, is even in that intensity, she was able with support to let the energy move out of her body, the trauma, the shock, the surrender. And then that debt, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, she was screaming, you guys. Mm -hmm. Like, it was, it, it was as though it was really happening. That's how intense it can get when, you're, when you really go into something. Doesn't matter if it's in the past or right now. But the intensity is like it's happening right now. And that's the thing. So your bodies are still acting as though everything's happening right now. Mm -hmm. So when you get triggered or activated be, by something external that causes these big reactions, you're, you're, you know, it's as though it's happening right now. Mm -hmm. So if you just close your eyes and come in, sometimes memories, like you just had that flashing of, mm -hmm. yeah. But the key is you gotta stay in the body. You gotta stay present. And then be with what that is. This is how you know thyself. Okay? Know thyself in all ways. Know thyself in being killed, being strangled, being eaten alive, being beheaded. Know thyself. And that way you won't hold that trauma inside. It gets released. So now here we are, you know, some of you a few hundred lifetimes, some of you over a thousand lifetimes. Most of those lifetimes weren't just easy, easy, fall asleep, die. <laughs> Most of them were something that was not fun. Okay, so all those traumas are still in your body and you've got lids on them. Like I can see the lids <laughs> on the bodies. Go ahead, that was good. Thanks, Trixie. So, so what would be cool today to start, it would be, it'd be start moving out some of these traumas so that some of that rebellion kind of feeling, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you all have it. Everyone's got some kind of fighting against, fighting against. But the only one suffering, I'm gonna remind you, the only one suffering is you. Okay. Yeah, right there, see, see? That's the rebel right there, that's the rebel. Now, you'll die before you give it up, okay? That's not all you.